All right, so uh, I've got a glass of water. Hopefully that's going to help. <laughs> Brain, body needs water to run well. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to ask some questions here. So Goa, Goa is design specific language. Mm -hmm. Is that what DSL stands yeah, for? Yeah. Uh, domain or domain design. specific design, language. Domain or design. I don't know. But and uh, we write some Goa, and then Goa will automatically generate some Go code for us. And uh, okay. and so it helps us eliminate a lot of just repetitive, redundant. And like in the last video, what really stood out is like, doesn't matter if it's XML, doesn't matter if it's JSON, it figures it out and then it puts it all into a struct for you so you mm -hmm. don't have to marshal, unmarshal. Yeah. Um, and oh, what's the, there's marshal, unmarshal, or encode, decode. You don't yeah. have to worry about any of that. Yeah. And, uh, and then it's just already in a struct ready to use. And that's part yeah. of the beauty of, Go up, yeah. right? Like it's just removing a lot of this sort of um, generic gen boilerplate, busy work, right? It's yeah. like once you understand it and you've done it twenty times, no need to do it anymore. Yeah. You know what's going on. Yeah, and um, and so so Go is going to help us. It's going to write, help us design how everything works, and and it's pretty clear, you know. Like um, obviously, I have some learning to do if I was to really try to understand. But I mean, I, it, just looking at it, it's like pretty well structured and pretty mm -hmm. condensed. Like this is what we're defining. And so on the page that you have open, we have resources and these are resources for um, a quiz. For a quiz. And so uh, with resources for a quiz, we have resource quiz and this function. This function you said goes a long ways, right? Yeah. yeah. And so we have the JWT security, get many, create, update, delete, delete all, and list. And publish, and question. So then and that's create. the next resource. Oh, and then questions, the next resource. So then, resources. So that's a resource. We have question, and then we have resource uh, quiz, and uh, resources. Then we'll have actions. But first, just like looking at this, mm -hmm. uh, you know, pretty pretty structured security, base path, and that's edit and action get, and function, and you know, that's going to be a parameter. And then, right, a URL yeah. parameter right there yeah. gets passed in. It's like this quiz ID number. Mm -hmm. And then params. And and then that string int workaround deal and response. And we have, uh, okay, bad request, not found, forbidden. So these are the possible responses yep. that could uh, occur if, if we're looking for that specific ID. Okay, got it. Here's the quiz media. Otherwise, bad request. How's it, how would it choose between bad request, not found, any of these four? Over uh, we, this top one, we in, in, when we implement it uh, over in our uh, get function over here, um, each one of these responses ends up becoming a separate function that you can call uh, on your context uh, to return that. Oh, that okay. So you're saying thing. build this, build these different functions so that I could use them when I write my Go code, and they're ready to be used. Yeah. And so we have. We have this resource quiz and it's got different actions. So one of the actions get, and then we have to come over here and actually write the get action in Go. And then we could use all this pre-built code that Go built for us. So some of the pre-built code we're gonna use is like, you know, bad request. And then over here we have uh, there. bad request, yeah. <laughs> right? And we wanna also build the not found because we wanna use not found right here, yeah. right? So in our get, and and with these would not found this is this is only a function that is specific to get for quizzes right so yes. not found again needs to be built down here and that's a different function for get yeah. many and we come down here and implement get many down there yeah okay so we de we def define first then when yes <laughs> <laughs> we define over here and we're saying build these functions and we come over here and we say okay right this resource quiz is going to have an action get or get many or create or update or delete and then we come over and we we basically say okay for this action on a quiz get for the get action and then we write our code and so over here you're saying this is where the other side of you know this workaround for the int 64 deal you're like over here just making sure that's all cool and you're mm -hmm. checking that and you have, this is just go string convert parse int. And then you 
you were going to say something. It sounded like you wanted nope, to interject. Nope, oh. nope I'm, I'm, I'm nodding and saying yes. Oh, cool. And then the dad, it, I thought I didn't understand this, but I feel like I'm actually explaining it okay. Yeah. I'm kind of impressed with myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, when I write code, I almost always have it in a two panel like this. Yeah. Design on one yeah. side and implementation on the other. Yeah, and so it's just writing stuff that you don't want to have to do a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, here we have from database, and database is probably some other Goa stuff so that generates. Database is our database Go yeah. plugin to Goa. And then it has git quiz, and that's just a query function or something where we yep. give a context and the QID, which we pulled out from from uh, our context. And then context, you just, context is just a big, big bucket. Enormous mass that's of stuff. holding a whole bunch of stuff that are all variables specific to a request. To, to that request. Was that yeah, and there's like some really cool little wiring that we did to kind of get the mm -hmm. Goa context and the App Engine context to kind of yes. work just yeah. where it's that. Yes, and that and yeah, yeah. That context is magically an App yeah. Engine context. And too. inside that context is like the request and request, the response, the response uh, and all our parameters yeah. and payload do we ask for. Yeah. And so we could just start dot notating notation into that to get all that stuff out. Mm -hmm. And um, well, that's cool. That makes sense. And uh, and I'm just looking to see if there's anything else. I think I think that kind of captured what I was confused about. Was mm -hmm. there more in the previous video that I I didn't say? Yeah, uh, the context maybe. is a big part. So yeah, the context is a big part, and that's the most confusing bit about Go yeah. One is the the fact that the context has everything. Mm. So in most Go programs, you see you see context, and it's a black box. You pet, you take it, you pass it around. You don't actually interact with it. Yeah, you don't put stuff into it. So so with Goa, it's turned the Go text into a giant like this is everything you ever care about ever yeah. in this request. Yeah. And you're just passing the address, so who cares? Yeah. I always wondered about that with Go, like, you know, why not stuff stuff into context? But mm -hmm. there's, like, a lot of the stuff I read about it, there's a lot of, like, oh, be careful, don't put the wrong things in context. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, so, yeah, specifically, you're supposed to put into context request-specific information. Yeah. So anything that could, that if the request ends, that information should be invalid, yeah. that's the kind of stuff you put into the context. And so that's exactly what Goa is doing. You got your request, you got your response writer, you got the variables that got passed it and parameters that got passed into that request. Yeah. So it's all, it's it's uh, idiomatic. Yes. Well, kind of. The fact that it uh, did so in such a way that it's not a standard context anymore is not really idiomatic, yeah. but it, that that's more so that you've got the convenience of just being able to say quiz ID instead of having to say, uh, what's it like, ctx dot, let's just go to the standard context level instead having to say like dot value quiz id which isn't which is a string which just so happens to be a string i, I don't want to do that every time i want to say ctx dot quiz id yeah so 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 it's more idiomatic to have it like this standard context stuff but goes like this is a lot easier yeah that's totally a lot easier but you know the interesting thing about those two comparisons is like uh like Go is pretty low level. Like you're mm -hmm. seeing each of the little operations you do. Yeah. And there's a there's a fine line between knowing like okay I just used assertion there as opposed to conversion. Mm -hmm. And I you know like okay I made sure I built each of those pieces. There's a fine line between that because the trade off of that the the plus of that is like I know how this is implemented. The trade off is it took a long time, <laughs> right? The other yeah. side is like, it's a little bit magic, but I was able to do it pretty quick. Yes. You know, so there's, yeah. you know, and if you get too far out, it's like Ruby where you enter like three commands and a whole website's built for you, you know? Yeah, you're like, yeah. don't know what happened there, but we got a website. Yeah. So, so yeah, with, with, the, with the more detailed control, you're also more in control of if something goes wrong mm. or someone's attacking your website, right. you're able to... Right. You've got that detail. Right. So it goes is, a little bit more low level. Yeah. Go ahead. Which is what? Yeah. Sorry, I cut you off. Yeah. And so the, that, which is why, as I was about to say, which is why they go still gives you access to the request directly if yeah. you need it. Yeah. Cool. Well, is there anything else that I missed in your description? I, so I probably stuff, talked myself into pro getting, Probably stuff about uh, database. Um, yeah. Tell me about that. So yeah, each table. So this is this we were in the quiz package. Now so we're st in, still still quiz, still but we're going quiz. from resources.go okay. to database.go. Okay. Uh, in in the design, so so yeah, each each database is a bunch of tables. Yeah. 
each one with a name. Yeah. And uh, fields, which some of which may be uh, copied yeah. from the from the media's uh, conversion functions and queries. So hold on one sec. Let's just pause there for a second. So I got something rolling through my head, and it's <clears throat> in in SQL they call them tables, and NoSQL they call them. Well, data store specifically called them kinds. I know kinds, and it's like there's different names in different places, but yeah. all you're storing is like information in yeah. some area, whether yes. you call it a kind or a table. And yeah. so <clears throat> we did. We choose the word table there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just right. like it's whatever, t t right? But it's still no table, SQL. Table's well known. Let's yeah. call, let's make it match because that's the same concept. And no SQL is is kind of like no schema, schemaless database. It's a schemaless and yeah. a schema in a SQL database just to. So, kind of, so SQL is structured query language. Yeah. So a no SQL database is one that doesn't have a structured query language. It's 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 it does its own thing for yeah. all its stuff. So usually means key value. Yeah. Um, hmm. I've also heard them called schemaless. Yes, most most NoSQLs are schemaless. Yeah. Um, it's is, not necessarily a it's not necessarily a definition for S SQL is its own like language. Yeah. And so a SQL database is one that accepts that language. Yeah. So the NoSQL one is one that's got its own custom language. Yeah. So whether that's because of schemas or no schema or if it's because oh, right. of Okay. Uh, or whatever. Okay. That it just means it's not using the standard query language. Because I think of schema lists at, at data store that I could take a struct and it's got five fields and put it in. Then later I could be like, well, now it's got 12 fields. I don't have to change any of the previous data. It's just yeah. like, okay, now it's, so, it's so kind of like just storing a big block that, of JSON. That, that's, that's schema. That, yeah. that would be the schema. So yeah, data store is, is schema less in addition to be no, being yeah. NoSQL. Yeah. Most NoSQLs are schema less. Yeah. And uh, but we have a table here, and we're pretty much being pretty structured about you know yeah, it, we, it's, even though it's no SQL, we're just being structured. We are creating our own schema. The database data yeah. storage didn't create it for us. We're saying this is what is stored in this kind or table, whatever you call it. Quiz yeah. in quiz, we are storing these fields, and and you know yeah. that's pretty set. But if we needed to change it later, we could. Yeah, if we if, if you want but to add a new field into this table, no you big can deal. do so. Da yeah. Data store doesn't care. Yeah. All right, yeah, so, interesting little conversation so, there. So, so yeah, so a quiz is a table. So you see how I learn from my students, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm kind of like I'm really good at intro, but uh, as we get, mm -hmm. I, I study economics. I, yeah. You know that, but in yeah. business, right? Like so, mm -hmm. this is just fascinating to me. Yeah. So, so every table creates a, a create the CRUD operations. Yeah. The four, the yeah. four CRUD create, operations. read, update, delete. Yep. So the create, just so all, all, all. Database operations take a context. Uh, well, it, all database operations except for the converts take a context. Okay. So, so all the CRUD operations and all the queries, they all take a context is the first argument. Okay. Um, create. Let's do database in the next video. One. Okay. Yeah. Let's all just right. keep trying to keep these short. We're already at 13 minutes. All right.